Hello YouTube pimps. This video is going to make somebody out there cry today. But it's going to be kind of a good nut check. A lot of people talk about how much ammo they're just going to hump out to the field when they bug out and the SHTF goes down. Well, we're going to look at the weights of a number of different cartridges and even shot shells. And uh, you're going to learn something pretty interesting. Let's get after it. We're going to start with 22 long rifle and 22 mag. I can literally hear the 22 long rifle fanboys salivating right now. Four grams, and that's a 40 grainer. Okay. This is a 30 grain VMAX 22 mag. What are you guys going to guess? Huh? I'm going to guess four grams also. Oh, it's three. So all the 22 long rifle fanboys that are like, oh, I'm going to use 22 long rifle for self-defense and SHTF. What did we just learn? Well, you might be better off going with 22 mag, right? Of course, if you go with 22 mag and 40 grain, it's going to increase the weight of that cartridge to what? Probably four grams, maybe five grams. So if we're looking at humping out 22 long rifle and SHTF, we're going to get 114 rounds per pound. And if we're humping out 22 mag in the 30 grain VMAX, we're getting 151 rounds per pound. Now we're going to get into some handgun cartridges. First, we're going to go with a 115 grain 9 millimeter XTP. 11 grams. Let's do a 158 grain 38 special. 16 grams. 357 mag. 158 grain. 16 grams. And 45 ACP. 230 grains. Get ready to cry. 22 freaking grams. This means for 115 grain 9mm, we're getting 41 rounds per pound. For 158 grain 38 special and 357, we're getting 28 rounds per pound. And for 230 grain 45 ACP, we're getting 21 rounds per pound. So where does this leave us? All right, obviously... 357 mag is going to be the most performance for the weight and it weighs the same amount as 38 special like what is the point in humping out 38 special let's do some rifle cartridges here we've got 556 762 by 39 3030 winchester and 30 out six Five, five, six, 12 grams. 762 by 39. 17 grams. Last time I weighed it, they were 16. They got to be really like on the cusp there. 30, 30 Winchester. Now this is 150 grain soft point. 20 grams. Last time I weighed this, it was 22 grams. Now I'm wondering if it's my scale or the quality control on these babies sucks. I'm not sure. Let's, let's do it again. 20 grams. Well, it's being consistent right now. We're going to go with it. Now, this is a 150 grain soft point in 30 out 6. What's your guess? I'm going to guess 22 grams. Wow, it's way off. 27 grams. So where does that leave us for those cartridges? Well, for the 556, which I believe was 55 grain, that gives us 38 rounds per pound. For the 762 by 39, which was 123 grain hollow points, 27 rounds per pound. 3030 Winchester, 150 grain soft points came in at 23 rounds per pound. So almost as much as a 762 by 39. 
And then the 30 out six and a 150 grain soft point came in at 17 rounds per pound. So if we look at this and we compare 3030 Winchester to 30 out six, same grain weight bullet. You have to add some weight when you get that extra powder load and an increased length of the actual brass case but it doesn't make up that much of a difference and you get much more performance. Let's do some 12 gauge. We're just gonna do two. Uh, these are both two and three quarters. This is number nine lead Winchester Super X. 40 freaking grams. This here is double a buck nine pellet. Forty grams, the same weight. We're gonna do a couple of twenty gauges as well. What we have here is uh, Fiocchi, however it is you say that. Um, golden pheasant number five in a two and three quarter. Thirty-five grams. And this is a number four, but it's a three inch magnum load. Forty three, forty two, it's right on the edge there. We'll go with forty two grams. When it comes to 12 gauge and 20 gauge, obviously there's not that much of a weight difference. There is a bit, but with the two, you're looking at generally anywhere from 10 rounds per pound to 13 rounds per pound. That shit is heavy. We're gonna weigh one more thing. I should say two. We're gonna weigh a 160 grain FTX bullet from Hornady. So that's these babies. And a lot of you guys probably know that this is new state of the art stuff for uh, lever actions. And let's see what we get. It comes in at 12 grams. Oh, 11 grams. We'll go with 11 grams. And then we also have some Sierra 125 grain flat nose. Let's weigh one of these babies. You really don't want to get hit by one of these doing freaking 2500 FPS out of a 3030 man. 9 grams. What did we learn in mountain school today, pimps? Well, we learned that the grain weight of the bullet or the actual lead shot in a shot shell is what makes up the massive amount of the weight. So how can we take the 80-20 rule and use that to make us more efficient? Well, we need to take a look at our ammunition selection and we need to match performance with the job that we expect that bullet to do. We're going to use 30 out 6 as an example. Let's say that's your bug out hunting rifle cartridge and you're taking it out into the freaking boonies with you. Are 150 grain soft points going to get the job done at the ranges at which you're going to be hunting big game? You know, are you going to be hunting really big game like elk? Do you need higher grain weight bullets? Because if you just pack 180 grain bullets out there, and you're never going to take a shot past 300 yards on anything, is it excessive? Could you shed some of that additional weight? We also learned that selecting cartridges that shoot a not super heavy bullet, but with a large powder charge and a large case, can, can be pretty efficient when it comes to getting work done at range, as long as you can put that bullet where it needs to go. You guys are smart, and I think you all get the point. Not all cartridges are created equal, but they're all freaking heavy as shit, okay? And so we need to be realistic about what we can actually take with us. What does that mean? Well, maybe we ought to have some cash points if we're going to, you know, have a destination in mind and we want to get there. We might also need to have cash points in different locations if we plan to operate in a specific area, our area of operations. This whole little test shines light on how great it is to be a prepper and to be living where you already want to be for shtf dudes it means that the sky is the limit as far as how much ammunition you can have access to i'm gonna let y'all go guys 
Like, share, subscribe it down below. Check out my Patreon link in the description. Come help support the channel. We can do bigger and better things with your help. I'll see you guys in the next video.